Welcome my friends, we are doing a commander deck tech this time. We're doing some serious squirrel power! Squirrel power! Toski Bearer of Secrets. We're doing not a squirrel tribal, but there's a lot of squirrel stuff going on in here. Especially with the couple of Modern Horizons 2 squirrels that are in there. Although that isn't the end all be all of this build. This is super fun. I played this a few times at our last commander session with the group I play with. Toski Bear of Secrets, it's mono green, four drop, one, one, legendary creature squirrel. This spell can't be countered, it's indestructible, and it, it attacks each combat if able. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. We're going to really lever that drawing capability mechanic in this build. All right, so let's jump into the different sections of this. We got ramp, we got squirrel power, squirrel power. Uh, we got our land base, which is very simplified since we're running mono green. Not too many utility lands in this. Alt win conditions. Uh, we got some counters action, as in like adding one one counters, et cetera, et cetera. Shenanigans, removal, couple protection pieces, draw, and a few tutors in green. And then we have a maybe board, which is things you could swap in and out depending on if you want to tweak it just a little bit here or there, either for budgetary reasons or just certain cards you like more over others. So as usual, if you are new to the channel, hit subscribe. If you are part of our subscriber base, thank you. Make sure you hit like. All right, so let's jump in and we'll start with ramp. So in ramp, we have signet. Now, yes, this is mono green, but this is great for a two drop that still gives us an additional mana ramp. But I got Azusa, Lost But Seeking. This was very helpful when I was playing this deck uh, and testing it out and tweaking a little bit. It just really helps to be able to play additional lands each turn, especially with some of our draw mechanics that we have. We can just keep dropping lands, keep drawing, et cetera, et cetera. Toski really helps out with that to get through this deck. Cultivate, yes, we know what this does. Put one onto the battlefield, put one into your hand. Elvish Mystic, we got a few mana dorks in here for one green. Emerald Medallion makes our green spells cost one less. Finhorn, another mana dork. Lanoir Elves, mana dork. Oracle of Muldaya, we're playing this instead of Cruffix because it's that much more powerful. You can play an additional land on each of your turns and you can play the top card of your library revealed. Now just remember, if you have the card revealed and it's a land, play that one first before you play the one in your hand because if there's another land below it, you can play that one too. But if you play land for turn out of your hand and then you play one off the top, then you have to let that other one sit. Just something to remember when you're playing. Ronas Monument makes our green spells minus one colorless. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, you get plus two, plus two, and gain trample until end of turn for one creature. All right, we got Tribal Elder, another mana dark to go fetch a land. Seedborn Muse, very, very helpful with some of our instant spells on our opponent's turns. And we have a couple spells in here that having the mana left over is really going to help. Oh, it might be something that's got the word Omnath in it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, Seedborn Muse untaps all permits you control during other players' untapped step. Sky Shroud, another way to go grab some force. Soul Ring, yes, of course, Soul Ring. Three visits to go grab a force, put on the battlefield, and this is untapped, which is very, very bueno. Wood Elves is another one that brings a force in untapped. Cost you three, you get a one-one body, and you go grab a force card, put on the battlefield, untapped. All right, so some of our utility cards and removal cards, here's one of them, Bane of Progress. It's a six drop two, two, but don't be scared of that six drop because we can go fetch it, go tutor it out and put it into play with some of the other cards we have synergized into this. When Bane of Progress enters the battlefield, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on Bane of Progress for each permanent destroyed this way. Yes, board clear in the enchantment and artifact section. Beast Within, very, very helpful. I like the other version of this, which is the new Phyrexia artwork. 
Boom. That is such a cool, cool art. Uh, mm, yes, I like that. Destroy target permanent. Its colonel puts a 3 3 beast creature token onto the battlefield. This is super helpful, especially if you're dealing with something tribal. Like, for instance, my buddy was playing Sliver Tribal. I was able to beast within his Sliver Legion, which was making all of his Sliver's Gigantosaurus Rex. Got rid of that super important one for his synergies. And he ended up with a measly 3 3 beast that did not synergize with anything. So, do not forget how effective Beast Within is. Force of Vigor, another very great, great removal spell. Destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments, and it costs you nothing if it's not on your turn, if you exile a green card. Nature's Claim, just a very nice staple in green. Not an auto-include by any means, but it is a very good staple. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, its controller gains four life. And what's nice about this is it only costs you one green to do. Reclamation Sage, another uh, oldie but goodie in terms of removal. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment, and it costs you three. All right, now we're into some tutor action. And again, I like the older version artwork. Boom. All right, Convoke, which is very nice because we're going to have squirrels all over the place uh, unless our opponents keep doing removal, mass removal. Um, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it into play, then shuffle your library. And Convoke, of course, just means you tap an untapped creature and you get that color of mana to add to this spell. All right, and notice it's instant speed, so we can do this on the end step of our opponent before our turn. Super, super jankalicious. Finale of Devastation, one of our uh, alt win scenarios, also a tutor. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it on the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more creatures you control, get X, X, and gain haste until end of turn. So what are we really trying to fetch out of our library? Well, Crater Hoof, Behemoth, of course. Uh, that's the main one. Hopefully it's not sitting in your hand when you finally do Finale of Devastation. That's one of the alt-win scenarios. We'll get to Crater Hoof in a little bit. Green Sun Zenith, same kind of stuff going on without the plus X plus X. Search library for a green creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Sh uh, shuffle Green Sun Zenith into your own hand. Another way to fetch that alt-win condition. Natural order, yet another way to fetch it. Sacrifice green creature, which should be pretty easy if our board state has normalized at all. Search your library for a green creature card and put it into play as though it were just played. Shuffle your library afterwards. Worldly tutor, yep, the tutor in green. Search your library for a creature card and reveal that card. Shuffle your library, then put it on top of it. All right, we got some squirrel power. Squirrel power. All right, acorn harvest for four. Put two one one green squirrel creature tokens into play with flashback. So for two, pay three life. You can do it again. Then you exile it. Chatter of the squirrel. Create a one one green squirrel creature token with flashback. Again, we can do it again. Very very helpful in the early game. Chitter spitter. Did I say that right? Chitters Spitter, yeah, three drop. This is brand new as of this recording out of Modern Horizons 2. I didn't actually test this and play this in my group because this card hasn't actually come out yet as of this recording, but this is great. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice token. If you do, put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. Woo, squirrels you control get plus one, plus one for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. And for one tap, create a one, one green squirrel creature token. That is so, so cool. All right, coat of arms. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield. Yep, squirrel action at its finest. Deep forest hermit, five drop, vanishing three. Uh, creature battlefield with three time counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from it. When the last is removed, sacrifice it. When deep forest hermit enters the battlefield, create four. Yes, that's right, four. One, one green squirrel creature tokens. Squirrels you control get plus one, plus one. Deranged Hermit, one of the more spendy cards in here because it is reserved list. It was just that cool that I made sure that I went and picked one of these up because I didn't actually have one of these. Deranged Hermit, it's a five drop with Echo, which just means on your next turn you need to pay its uh, cost again. When Deranged Hermit comes into play, put four squirrel tokens into play. 
Treat these tokens as 1-1 one, one green creatures. All squirrels get plus one, plus one. Oh yeah, buddy. All right, deranged hermit. All right, druids call whenever enchanted creature is dealt damage. This controller puts that many 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens into play. Put this onto Toski and you are off to the races. It's not the only creature you would put it on, but that's a really good one because it's got indestructible. And unless you have a bunch of minus one, minus one uh, removal, like toxic deluge or whatever else, um, you're really in good shape. Heraldic Banner, this is great for any tribal-ish decks. Uh, especially in mono colors. Add one mana of the chosen color. You choose green in this case, and all your creatures get plus one. Plus, you can tap it for one mana. I mean, that's great. All right, Crows and Beast. Threshold, Crows and Beast gets plus seven, plus seven. Just means that if you have seven cards in your graveyard, this thing is an eight, eight instead of a one, one. Boom, a shalakalak, boom. And I love that it's a squirrel. That's hilarious. All right, the Nut Collector. On the surface, it kind of looks like, oh, I don't know if this is that great, but let's let's explain. For four, you get a three, four spirit. If Legion of the Hollows is put into any graveyard from play, each player may put any amount of mana, or may pay any amount of mana to put that number of squirrel tokens into play under his or her control. Treat those tokens as one one green creatures. So if you get a massive Wrath of God board wipe, well then if you have mana available, you can create a bunch of squirrels. Yes, your opponents can also do that, but likelihood is that it's gonna benefit you way more than your opponents. You'll likely have mana available and they likely won't have much. Plus you are the one that's synergizing with squirrels, not your opponent. The Nut Collector, it's a six drop at the beginning of your upkeep. You may put a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token into play. Threshold, all squirrels get plus two, plus two. Boom, shalakalak, boom. I think that's twice I've said that. All right, Squirrel Mob, also out of Modern Horizons 2. I did not play test this in my group with this card, but it's making it that much more powerful. It's a three drop, two, two. Squirrel Mob gets plus one, plus one for each other squirrel on the battlefield. This is awesome for squirrels. Squirrel Sovereign, uh, I think one of the last ones to add from Modern Horizons 2. Other squirrels you get, get plus one, plus one. Very basic two, two drop, but with the awesome benefit of being a squirrel and having the plus one, plus one mechanic. That's super janky squirrel fun. Squirrel Wrangler, four drop, two, two. It's a druid, so it's technically not a squirrel. However, for two, you can sacrifice the land, put two, one, one green squirrel creature tokens into play. That's gonna really help mid game, late game. And for two, sacrifice the land, all squirrels get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Also a late game clutch win if you need it. All right, now we're into protection. Just a couple protection pieces. Uh, a very big staple in green, hero uh, heroic intervention. Permits you control, gain X-proof and indestructible and end of turn. Tongue tied. Veil of Summer. I just really like this card. Uh, it is swappable if you're not running into a lot of black and green removal in your groups, but it is a very good include that's going to really help swing the game for you. Draw a card. If an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn, spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until end of turn. So obviously, this helps not at all against red and white, and you get the idea. Um, or green for that matter. But most likely if you're playing against three people, somebody's playing blue, somebody's playing black. So it most, most likely is gonna be helping you in a very clutch moment. All right, we got some draw, 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 Beast Whisper. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. And this is gonna really help do your draw mechanics, especially if you draw into Beast Whisper with Toski. Uh, this is just an overall great card for this build. Life Crafters, Bestiary, at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay one green. If you do, draw a card. Now, a nice little life hack that I use with this is make sure you put like a dice on your deck so when you go to draw that you remember to scry because it is so easy to forget to do that scry. And that auto scry every turn for you is so, so powerful as it keeps building and building and building. So hopefully you drop this on turn three, turn four because it, it really does help you or it puts a big target on it that makes them have to utilize a spell of theirs for some artifact removal. 
Okay, my adversary, it's a four drop, two, three, with costing two less if an opponent has a green permanent, and it's got death touch, and it draws a card if you do damage to a player. So this is just a very, very versatile card. It even sees competitive EDH play. That's how great this card is. And the fact that you can drop this for two if you're playing against somebody else that's green is super awesome. Super duper. All right, we got Return of the Wild Speaker. We're gonna hopefully be going wide, so then we can do the non-human creatures you control, get plus three, plus three until end of turn. And or draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. So you might have a bunch of creatures out there that have just gotten very large, and then you can draw to your heart's content on that one too. But most likely you're gonna be utilizing the plus three, plus three mechanic of that one. All right, we got the oldie but goodie Sylvan Library. This is just very powerful. You don't have to pay the four life per two extra cards. At the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards, which means three. If you do, choose two cards in your hand drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay four life or put the cards on top of your library. So there's really no downside to drawing three every single time unless you're about to get milled. And then you can choose or at least at the very least, if you don't want to pay the eight life or the four life, you can filter your card so that you get what you want next turn. Very, very awesome broken card. All right, we got land. We're going to blast through the land. We have a couple utilities like Castle Garen Bridge. Uh, it really does help because we're mono green. Um, you can pay four. I should probably actually explain it. All right, it comes into the uh, battlefield tap unless you control force, which is almost guaranteed and for four you can add six but just to play creature spells or activate abilities of creatures so mainly this is to get a creature out uh for six for four uh, that normally you wouldn't all right and this is just a silly version of a regular land card so let's put in something normal there we go all right we're running 28 basic lands so no blood moon shenanigans gonna affect us no surrey bob all right, we got Nickville Shrine to Nyx for two. You can choose a color, which is green, and then you get that much per your devotion. Just keep track of your devotion, and this is going to really help you float a lot of green mana. All right, we got Orin Reef the Vastwood. It does come in tapped. I do not like that part, but put a 1-1 counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Notice it says entered, not cast, which is super important because we're going to be dropping a bunch of squirrels and then to be able to plus one plus one each of those is very very cool all right uh swarm yard this lets us regenerate a squirrel ha <laughs> that's funny now this may not really be that big a deal for you depending on what your board state is because remember toski is indestructible to begin with but if something else is being targeted this is great totally swappable card though Totally swappable. All right, and then we have War Room. It's got three tap, pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander. Color identity, draw a card, yes. So it's gonna cost us one life to draw a card. That ain't bad. All right, before we get to counters, just wanted to mention we purposely aren't running Gaia's Cradle in here because it's so expensive and practically speaking, you're not gonna drop a Gaia's Cradle or pay for a Gaia's Cradle just for this build. However, if you have a Gaia's Cradle, definitely put it in here because you can't go wrong with it. But I purposely didn't put it in here because, well, you know what, yeah, Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, of course you'd put this in here if you have it. All right, Branchwood Evolution, we're into counter actions. If one or more 1-1 counter would be put on creatures you control, twice that many 1-1 counters are put on that creature instead. So a baby doubling season. Champion of Lamb holds to three drop 1-1. One, one. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield on your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Champion of Lambard. That is fantastic. And creatures with power less than Champion of Lambold power can't block creatures you control. So this starts getting really, really jankalicious, especially with all our little ping, ping, ping swirls. Then of course we are actually running doubling season and I like this version better, boom. If an effect would put a counter, make it twice as many, uh, so we're good. If you get tokens, you get twice as many. If you get plus one, plus one counters, you get twice as many. This thing is flipping awesome. All right, Hydra's Growth. 
I mean, yeah, it's an uncommon uh, Theros Beyond Death, but you know what? This thing is so awesome. Enchanted creature, when higher growth enters the battlefield, put a 1 1 counter on it. Enchanted creature, at the beginning of your upkeep, double it! Double it! So if you have doubling season or, or baby baby doubling season, you're you're doubling the double. Oh, this gets out of hand so flipping quick. Holy shnikes. And if you get this on Toski, like turn three, boom. Shalakalak. Say you mana ramped into Toski, then turn three, turn four, you hide or growth it. Oh my goodness, that's game over. Scavenging Ooze. Exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Scavenging Ooze and you gain one life. This was really, really great in the meta and standard uh, early on when it came out in Core 2021. Haven't seen much play with this lately though in standard, at least as of this recording, but this is a great addition with the plus one, plus one counters. Plus we can deal with some reanimation stuff from our opponents. All right, next up is Scoot Swarm. We have a nice little combo with auspicious uh, mutating shenanigans going on. Scoot Swarm, landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control. Create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token. That's a copy of Scoot Swarm. This thing gets out of hand real quick. One of the times we were playing in my play group, this thing just started getting giant. Then it got Wrath of God, but hey, you know what? It was, it was fun while it lasted. Vigor. Ooh, this one is persnickety. This is really, really hard to deal with. Uh, this is a great include, not only in this build, but in a lot of green builds. Vigor, it's a three green, 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 so six drop, six, six trample. If damage would be dealt to another creature you control, prevent that damage, put a one, one counter on that creature for each damage prevented this way. When Vigor is put into the graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So they got to get rid of this thing before they can get rid of other things. I mean, it's just a very, very awesome card. Very much. The only thing that deals with this really is mass removal for your board state. All right, we got Whisper or Whip Tongue Hydra. Now I put this in here specifically because we don't have ways to deal with flyers. And in a lot of my play groups, there's a lot of flying going on. So this is a very, very awesome uh, tutored card utility creature to go fetch with some of our tutoring capabilities. Whip Tongue Hydra, it's a six drop four four, but if we're tutoring for it and most likely dropping it on the battlefield, it's got reach, and when Whip Tongue Hydra enters the battlefield, destroy all creatures with flying. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Whip Tongue Hydra for each creature destroyed this way. So we're really not about top decking this one. This is about going and fetching it if we need it to hit the battlefield. It is very, very awesome. And notice it's not cast it, it's enter the battlefield. So we're going to be able to wipe the board of flyers with Whip Tongue Hydra. Very jankalicious fun. You, you. All right, Arbor Elf, we got a little bit of a alt win going on. We have an infinite combo. So just keep this in your mind. Arbor Elf, untap target forest. Crater Hoof Behemoth, this is where we go. Tutor for this, drop it on the play field and just swing with Gigantosaurus Rex Battlefield. Whenever Creator of Behemoth in the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X, plus X, till end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. This is just a win con condition. All right, so the other part of this is Earthcraft. Tap an untapped creature you control, untapped target basic land. So this with Squirrel Nest is gonna just make some shenanigans happen. So we can tap. Tap an untapped creature, which is a squirrel you control, untap, target basic land, boom, retap, boom, retap with Arbor Elf. It's just so awesome. Arbor Elf, uh, squirrel nest, make it happen, Captain. So, like I was saying, squirrel nest, enchant land, enchant land has tap, create a 1 1 green squirrel creature token. So, that's the 1 1 that we can tap to untap the enchanted land. Blah, 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 blah. Infinite. And we can do that on the end step of our opponent. So all those squirrels could have uh, non-summoning sickness. Yeah, buddy. All right, here's another alt win. Out of Strixhaven School of Mages, Strixhaven Stadium for three. You can tap add colors, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, 
remove a point counter from Strixhaven Stadium. However, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Then, if it has 10 or more point counters on it, remove that all them all, and that player loses the game. Boom, shalaka lock, shake the broom. Yep, nice little alt win going on. Another really nasty alt win condition, or really put people on their toes, or feet, toes, feet, heels, heels, that's right, I knew it was a body part. Uh, triumph of the Hordes, a four drop until end of turn. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample, and infect. Boom. Ten infect counters per opponent, and they are Dunzies. Dunzos, Dunzo, Washington. Yep, that is an awesome card. All right, the combo with Scoot Swarm is Auspicious Sterix. Uh, this is Mutate for six. Whenever this creature mutates, exile a card from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. Now, what's cool is you can mutate your Scoot Swarm, and instead of Scoot Swarm being a 1-1 one, one body, it's going to be a 6-6 six, six mutated shenanigan again Sterix. I mean, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome in indeed. Now, when you do the copy uh, of the uh, Scoot Swarm slash Auspicious Sterix, you're not going to then be able to do the, um, the mutate capability. Just keep that in, the, in mind. It, but it does create a 6-6 six, six instead of a 1-1. One, one. So that's pretty darn tootin' and groovy. All right, Beastmaster Ascension for three. Whenever a creature you control attacks, you may put a quest counter on Beastmaster Ascension. As long as Beastmaster Ascension has seven or more quest counters on it, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. Very, very cool green card for any tribal stuff going on or creatures where you got one, one, two, one, two, twos, three, threes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Blar -de -de blar Bellowing Tangle Vum. It's a five drop, four, four, Intimidate. This creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and creatures that share a color with it other green creatures you control have intimidate yes this is super helpful makes your creatures unblockable most of the time all right eternal witness whenever eternal witness enters the battlefield you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand not really sure why i put this in the shenanigans section uh but it lets you go grab stuff and bring it back all right, Freilis, Lanwar's Fury. This is a totally swappable card. Absolutely, absolutely. I like the card. I decided to include it. Uh, plus two, created one, one green elf druid creature token with tap, add one green. So this is, could be ramp. Uh, it could also be token generation with doubling season mechanics. It's minus two, it's destroy target artifact or enchantment. So it's utility, can destroy stuff you need. And it's minus six, draw a card for each green creature you control. That can also happen as well. So there's a lot of versatility going on with this Planeswalker. Um, so yeah, leave it in if you got it. Swap about it if you don't. Um, it, it is a cool card though. All right, this one is and can be a very big game winner. You don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. So that means you keep accumulating mana, which is super, super helpful, especially with all of our draw mechanics. Then, Omnath Locus of Mana gets plus one, plus one, not in the form of counters. Just remember that with the doubling season thing. For each unspat green mana you have, boom, shalaka laka. Dude, this thing can get giant, giant. I think at one point I had Omnath Locus of Mana up to like a, a 45, 45 or 46, 46. It was ridiculous. Just super janky. All right, that brings us full circle. Thanks for staying with us till the end. Put something in the comments that says, yo, Ryan, I made it to the end, bro. And I'll be like, awesome, you rock, rock, man. Anyways, Toski Bear Secrets, it's a very fun, cool card. Try it out. All right, thanks for tuning in. Check out our other episodes. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being a subscriber.